Senator Ron Johnson joins us now. Senator, thank you for being with us. Uh, the you, just before we get to the that stuff, Nikki Haley, uh, is it time for her to drop out of the race? Do you think that uh, the, it, the people should strike their tents and move on? What do you say? Good morning, Chris, and congratulations on your new show. That will be up to Nikki Haley. You know, I don't endorse candidates. Uh, I let uh, Republican primary voters decide who our candidates are, and then I endorse those folks, folks in the general election. So that will be up to Nikki Haley to decide that. Prudential, a prudent answer. Okay, um, uh, on to some of the business of the Senate before we get to the politics of the Senate. Uh, we uh, hear that House Republicans are paving a way for a potential aid package for Ukraine. Uh, the reporting today suggests that there's a way forward in the House uh, for a spending package that would include funding for Ukraine. Uh, you voted against uh, a broader package in the Senate, or you were opposed to a broader package in the Senate that included funding for Ukraine. Is there something coming out of the House that you could support? Well, first of all, when President Biden uh, proposed his supplemental spending, uh, the, the point was made, it's a very valid point, that before we send $60 billion to Ukraine to secure their borders, we ought to secure our own. That's a very valid point. I think that's what the American people expect. And that's certainly what people like me have been fighting for, is let's take care of, the, of our own border. And by the way, President Trump, using existing law, uh, secured the border. Uh, President Biden, using that exact same authority, opened it up. So he has the authority to secure the border. He just doesn't want to. He wants an open border. He caused this problem, which, is, which was a real issue in terms of trying to negotiate with Democrats who also want an open border. They didn't want to solve the problem. They wanted political cover, and unfortunately, Leader McConnell gave it to them. So, uh, by the way, uh, from your perch uh, uh, as a, as a uh, budget poobah, uh, we're a week away again, as always, it seems like, from another potential government shutdown. How optimistic are you that a deal can be made? Do we, do we have the framework of a deal uh, to get past the impasse? Well, from my standpoint, at this point, the least worst option would just be a full year CR. That would actually save us uh, close to $100 billion. And then we can turn our attention to a functioning budget and appropriation process for fiscal year 2025. So we don't find ourselves in the exact same position. My guess is the Uniparty, uh, who generally likes to spend money, has no problem plundering and mortgaging our children's future, will come to some kind of agreement and pass something. I, I hope they do it sooner rather than later so we can have a budget process that guides an appropriation process uh, so we don't repeat this again in 2025. Okay, now for the stuff I like for the politics. Uh, you sent a letter uh, to John Barrasso, who is the who is the organizing uh, human for the Republican conference in the Senate, and you wanted transparency and you wanted a clearly uh, defined process for choosing a replacement for Mitch McConnell. And uh, the the letter is a, is is few in words but deep in significance, uh, in part because. One in five Republican senators, you including you, signed on to this letter. And the names on the list, Tommy Tuberville, J.D. Vance, Josh Hawley, uh, Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, uh, Rick Scott, this is some of the, whether you want to call it the MAGA or the populist, whatever word you want to use, but that's a faction, right? The, you 10 make up a considerable faction inside the Republican conference. Um, so I'll get it out of the way by starting. Uh, are you, you, you say you're not running, but you haven't said you wouldn't take the job. Uh, 10 votes is a lot of votes in a, in a caucus of 49 people, in a conference of 49 people. Well, first, let me point out, this is the fourth letter I've led to call a conference meeting in this Congress, uh, three in just the last couple of months, uh, the, one on the border negotiations, then one on Ukraine, and now one in terms of replacing the leader. But what this letter is primarily about you know, I don't think people truly understand the profound dysfunction within Congress. I come from the private sector. And, you know, successful organizations have vision, mission statements. They have goals. The people in their organizations know what their roles are in achieving those missions and those goals. That's not Congress. Now, the Democrats, they know exactly what they want to do. Uh, they want to grow government. Uh, they have no problem mortgaging, plundering our children's future. They want open borders. They want to destroy our fossil fuel industry. Uh, what Republicans have not done is effectively counter the destruction of the radical left, the destruction of the Democrat Party. That's what we need to do. So what I asked for in this conference is let's discuss, discuss 
a mission statement, let's establish goals, and then let's figure out exactly the process for electing a new leader. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.